Okay, let's go over section 2.3 um, in this video. Section 2.3 is the uh, interpretations of the derivative. It's the interpretation of the derivative. Okay, so in the last few sections, we talk about the derivative. Um, as the rate of change, the instantaneous velocity, or the slope as one point, or the slope of the tangent line as the curve at one point only. Now, in this section, we we're gonna discuss more about um, different type of um, interpretation of the derivative. So the first thing before we discuss further. Um, Remember, in section 2.2, .2, we call a function f of x, and when we want to take the derivative of this function, we are going to write that as f prime of x. Okay, but now we have another notation. So let's go alternative notation. Okay. So instead of writing f prime of x, now we can write dy over the x. This is the same thing as the derivative of f um, or the f over the x. And the letter d here stands for the derivative. And this is the same thing as delta y over delta x or the changing in y over the changing in x and these are very small okay so this meaning I mean this notation uh, represent for the der derivative of f the function f and also if you write f prime of 3 this is the the derivative of the function f as the point x equal 3 or you can write in another notation dy over dx as the point x equal 3 so it makes more sense so these are the derivative with respect to x of the function y so we take the derivative of the function y with respect to x at the point x equal 3 and we write this inside uh, the value of the function, I mean the, the derivative. And make sure that when you write dy over dx, this is not the same as x over y. You cannot simplify uh, cancel the d. dy, they come together, represent for the derivative of y with respect to x for the function y. So after knowing the notation, uh, let's go over one example to see if it makes sense or not. Now I have a given function s of t and this function represents for the height in meter okay, of an object. T second. So the height in meter of an object after t second. So t here represents for the second. After it's being drove in the air. Okay. Now the derivative function for the s is represented by s prime of t right or ds over dt because we are taking the derivative of the function s with respect to the time t so the time t is always in the in the bottom so anything the variable inside this function is the one that stay at the bottom okay so this is the rate of change of this function 
with respect to the time or the changing in meter per second okay so if you have a meter per second this represents for the velocity or the speed of the object so if they give you the height or the location position functions if you take the derivative of that function it will give you a velocity function so keep in mind of this now what if I have s of s prime of 2 equal 15 what does this mean what does, it, what does this represent we know that s prime is the derivative function so this is the derivative of s or the velocity at the time t equal 2 so we know that at the time t equal 2 second right the objects um, the velocity here is 15 that means the object is moving up at 15 meter per second the reason we have uh, moving up because the value here is positive and positive means that the object is, is moving up as the speed or the velocity of 15 meter per second another value is s prime e of of 6 equal minus 17 if you have a minus value for the velocity that means the object is moving down right Com uh, in contrast to the last one so at the time t equals 6 seconds at t equals 6 seconds the object is moving down because of the negative value so the object is moving down at the velocity or the speed of 17 meter per second so it's really easy when when we write out um, the derivative notation so what about the, vari the variable here become the notation at the bottom so ds over dt that means the changing in s over the time s here is the location the position function in meter so changing in meter over the time is the velocity all right let's go to another notation i mean another example i have uh, the populate population of the world um represented by p in billions of people right and this uh, this population is a function of the year t equal p uh, the year the year t and this and this function p equal f of t so t here is the years the time in year p is the population of the world in billions okay so now they ask us to explain what's the f of 1990 mean okay f of 1990 equal 5.295 so what does this, this represent for remember f function here is the p which is the the number of people or the population now f of 1990 which is t1990 so we know that at the year of 9990 or 1990 so as 1990 we have the population of 5.295 billions okay because the, the population the units is in billion so at the year of 1990 we have 5.295 billion people right or if you write us all the way out 5 295 billion so 
six more zero people. Now, if we, they ask for f prime of nine 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 zero, that means we are asking for the derivative as the year nineteen ninety, or they are asking for the rate of change of that function at this point. So the rate of change of the population is that is asking for what is the rate of the people increasing or decreasing as the year of 1990 and they give us the value of 0 0.086 because we have a net positive value that means in the year of 1990 the world population is increasing is increasing as a rate of 0.086 billion or a six and then six more zero so 86 million people so at the year of 1990 the rate of the population is increasing with 86 million people per year all right now we know the rate uh, the rate of the people increasing as at the time of 1990 another question they may ask is what is uh, they want us to estimate F of 1989 okay how, how do we estimate the function or the population in the world at the year 1989 from the previous slide we know that at the year of 1990 we have this much people so 5.295 billion people so we know that f of 1990 is uh, 5.295 this much people and we know that the rate at the year 1990 is 86 million people now that means every year around 1990 the people, the number of people in, increased by this much for each year. So we have this much at 1990. And a year before that, of course, it will have less people. And the number of the people that are less than this year is this current number minus for this one. Because this is the rate of change. That means each year, this much of people increases and from 1990 and 1989 we have uh, less than this amount of people and then at 1990 we add this amount of people to get to this this one okay so that's mean at the year of 1989 we have this year of 1990 minus the rate 86 million people Five two zero nine zero zero zero. One more people. Now, what happened if the year of nineteen ninety one? So we know that's nineteen ninety. We have this much people, and the rate of the people is is increasing with this much for each year around nineteen ninety. So nineteen ninety one. One more year after nineteen ninety. That means we are taking this current value. We add to the rate for this much people per year and we get to the number for the people of 1991 so 5295000000 000 add to 86 million people because this is the rate of change so let's give you 5381 
zero 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 people right so we are just taking the rate of change we add to that every single year if we go back we subtract that but this is just the the, the estimation around 1990 because the rate of change at the year 1990 it dismissed people but we don't know what happened to the rate of change after that three year four year or five years it will be different so this is just the estimation from the 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 the, the area around 1990 so this example um, leads us to another topic called the local linear approximation okay so if if we have a function y equal f of x and delta x is near zero that means the changing in x or the delta x is very small then the change in y equal to f prime or approximately equal to f, f prime of, of x delta x right so remember delta y equal to this one multiplied with delta x assuming that delta x is very small or close to zero so f prime of x remember f prime of x is what is delta y over delta x if you multiply by delta x you're gonna get what back to delta y assuming that delta x is very small so this uh, approximation is, is true now then for x near a a is, is just some random number and so delta x we let that equal to x minus a that means the change in, in x from the point a okay so for x is near very near to a that means these two values are very uh, close to each other so delta x will be uh, nearing zero so then for x near a and we let delta x equal x minus a we have the approximation for the function f of x equal to f of a plus f prime of a delta x and this function is called the tangent line approximation okay so um, the function f of x we can approach that line by using the slope as point A, adding to the value of that and multiplying with, uh, with delta x. So basically, this whole thing here is just delta y, right? And delta y, so we add delta y to the value of that function at point A. Now, this is not a, a really makes sense to um, a lot of you guys, but consider the function. Remember the Poisson's law formula, right? Y equal y zero plus m x minus x zero. So remember this 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 Poisson's law formula from your previous classes. So we use y equal y zero plus m x minus x zero for the lie. Um, to write a function of a line, linear line. Now, if you use um, the slope as the derivative, remember that the slope is the derivative. So the slope m is now the derivative at point A, and y not is the value at point A, right? And delta x is x minus A. Um, then you should be able to get to this this formula 
right so this one is FA right which is why not plus for the slope which is M and letter X is just X minus A or X minus X naught in your Poisler formula so this one is actually this formula the Poisler formula but in term of the derivative and uh, the delta X so nothing is really new they're just using another another notation to represent that because remember from last time uh, last example we approximate the population right by using the current population at 1990 the year 1990 then we add to the the rate which is 86 million people uh, to the next year and Delta X now is just the changing from 1990 to 1991 which is just one year or the rate multiplied with one or still 86 million people if you want to estimate the year of 1992 we use the year of 1990 then we mul multiply with add, we add to the rate of 86 million people and delta x should be 2 because 1990 and 1992 is 2 so we multiply 2 with the rate we add to the year of 1990 so this is the tangent line approximation to um, a function as we can see from um, the previous example alright so let's move to the next topic the relative uh, ray of chain relative ray of chain okay so we have a function y equal f of t at a time t equal a and this is defined as um, so the relative ray of chain is defined as we have a function f of t and t is a time as a, as a point a now the relative ray of chain is the derivative dy over dt over the original function or you can write that as in another notation so the derivative as point a over the value of the original function at point a so this is the relative rate of chain so the derivative over the ori original function as that point a very easy to memorize now let's go over one example of this and hopefully it will make sense okay I have the function w equal f of t okay and this function represent for the soybean uh, production and this is in million tons okay now t is the year since 2000 now part a they ask us to uh, interpret f of a equal to 53 and f prime of a equal 17 in terms of um, the soybean production okay so f of a is 253 f function here is just the soybean production in million tons so f of a equal two fifty a two fifty three. This is this mean that f of t t is in year. That mean as the year t equal a. But now we know that this problem states that t is a year since two thousand. Now t equal a. That mean eight more year after two thousand or two thousand a or in the year of two thousand a the production of the soybean 
soybean is 253 million tons, right? Now, F prime of A, again, A is a 10 year after 2000. So, A year after 2000 is 2008. So, again, in 2008, the um, F prime is the derivative. That means the rate of change or, or how, how fast uh, the production is, is, is uh, happening at, that, at this time. So you can say that because they give us uh, f prime of a be a positive number, that means the rate of change is increasing. So we know that at the year two thousand eight, the production uh, rate is increasing at the rate of. 17 million ton per year okay. so the derivative means that the rate of change of that pr production um, per year which is 17 million tons per year now the second part is they ask us to find the relative rate of change uh, of the function w at a time t equal 8. So again, the relative rate of change is what? Is the derivative of a over the original function f of a. But now, we are looking for the the year t equal 8 or a now become 8 over f of 8 okay and from the previous uh, is uh, parts we know that f prime of 8 is it was given as 17 over 253 if you do the division it should give you 0 for 0 6 7 and this means that we have a continuous a rate of 6.7 percent per year so relative rate of change uh, has to be in percent per year continuous rate all right so that is the the end of um, section 2.3